it's on. It's succeeded, we're happy we've got you on Tableau Block. By the way, I'm going to start with the internet. Everyone on this plane will have $50 credit towards your next Virgin America flight. We hope to make it up to you. Huh. Has United ever done that? No. American? No. Delta? No. Maybe if you complain, you might get a credit. But why would they actually preempt that? Why would they preempt that? Why would they give it out in advance? Make sure you come back. They make sure you come back. But they've actually done the analysis. The cost of servicing a service request for everybody who calls in and says this and complains, servicing that, plus the added frustration of the individual traveler, plus the image recognition for them, there's like 50 people on a flight. By the way, you're only going to come back and fly them. They didn't get $50 away. That's customer lifetime value. They optimized for a business outcome. Customer lifetime value. They changed their process of, oh, there's a ticket, there's a problem with this particular internet, so we're going to get a bunch of service request tickets, and there's this process that goes through at the end where they get resolved. And they said, no, uh -uh. we're not going to go through that process. We're going to stop the whole service request process. We're going to give them something in advance. That's the difference between someone who says, I want to change my process, and someone who says, no, I'm going to actually think about it as a business outcome. You might be sitting there saying, hey, that's great. That's Virgin America. They're a new company. Maybe I'm burdened with 100 years of legacy systems. That's much harder to do. So, yeah, you're probably right. They did get to start fresh. And it is easier to start fresh. I agree. But what if I told you a story of someone who had um, 40 ERP systems, SAP, various different versions, Oracle, Dynamics. They were 20 other systems on which they were trying to get essentially just the finance order to cash process to work, including Salesforce, including Jira, uh, ServiceNow for some tickets that were coming through. And they had to do this across 1,500 operating units. The company was over 100 years old, and they had growth acquisition. That sounds hard. You're talking about my company? <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, and they had an audacious goal of through continuous improvement to drop their cost of goods sold by 5%. A $28 billion company dropping their cost of goods sold by 5%. That's, that's a lot. That's a billion dollars. That's ADD. And they did. And they did start from scratch, like Virgin America. But what they did do is they said, we're going to identify business outcomes, and then we're going to figure out what process those business outcomes are driven by, and we're going to optimize the parts of that process that deliver a business outcome. It might not be the thing that everybody thinks is most painful. It might not be the most manual activities. It's going to be the piece of the process that deliver up the highest value for our cost of goods sold. And that's what Protein took. What was the closure of ours? So, as a customer, we've been with us for a long time. Uh, they run 90% of the order to cash process now through, through Solonis, and that's the thing for Solonis to look into those individual processes, identify the areas within those little, like, if you will, tasks, and figure out which of these is going to deliver the most value. And no, you'd be surprised. The ones everyone thought were going to be the ones, yes, some of them were the ones that got fixed. Some of them, no, they didn't get fixed. Fixed, meaning, yeah, it's painful, yeah, it should be automated, yeah, there's a better way of doing it. Not disagreeing, but I could do something else that's going to be a lot more value. And that's, that's what I'll talk a little bit more about today. It's how do you figure out the ones that are going to deliver business outcome versus how the ones that just everyone wants to do the pet project for everybody. And how do you arm folks like yourselves to actually show people that so that they will take the one that delivers more value versus the pet project. Uh, you guys all know this. This is, there's very specific incarnations of this, but this is the idea of a business transformation cycle. Uh, I changed the wording just a little bit from what you might see in a lot of the textbooks uh, to reflect what I call reality. So the first thing is identify a business opportunity, customer lifetime value, working capital, perfect PO rate, um, <laughs> on-time delivery. That's your business opportunity. I didn't say efficiency or effectiveness. I'm not against efficiency or effectiveness. I love bad things, but what pays the bills? What's my corporate strategy goal? The other thing is if you align it to that, I'm pretty sure you have a good chance of getting budget for people to take action on it. Uh, analyze root causes and select a way to address that. That might be automation. 
That might be just putting an alert up front. That might be finding a new technology to scan paper stuff and turn it to make it digital. There's a lot of different solutions, not just one every single time. Analyze the cause of prioritize based on the business opportunity, but operationalize that change. Operationalize the changes. Ironically, everybody identifies opportunity to consultants. Sorry if you're in the audience. I was one of them once before. Uh, they're really good at one and two. They're, they kind of walk out the door and say, good luck for number threes and fours. Um, and then if you do it right, they claim credit. But if you don't, they know that because you didn't fix it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, sounds like the kids, by the way. Uh, so yeah, three, you got to actually fix it. You got to do something about it. And then you got to monitor it. And here's the part where everyone here gets you get the most benefit. Show it off. Hey, I put in this automation thing. I said I was going to do this. This is what I did. You have all the data. Why would you show it off? Because you want to get like kudos and a promotion and a raise? Well, sure, yeah, but no, because you want to get your next project funded. That's how you get next project funded. So, um, just walking through this in a little bit more detail, and I, I do this just to drive home a point. When you identify the business goal, then you analyze the process to drive it. So, so a lot of people say, hey, I want to fix, fix my purchase to pay process. Really? What's broken about it? Oh, it's broken. It's highly manual. There's all these errors. We're doing things late. No, no. What, what are you trying to fix? It's the process. Maybe not. Do you want to optimize working capital? Do you want to have more perfect POs? Do you want to process more POs with the same number of people? What, what literally are you trying to do? Then we'll go analyze the process. Because you know what? I'm going to show you here in a second. Every person here has more process permutations than you can mentally actually capture in your head. So you can't just analyze the process. You gotta drive your business cycle. Then we start analyzing the process for that goal, then you can actually find something. Uh, discover improvement areas, and then prioritize them on business impact. There's gonna be some pet projects, and people say we should absolutely do this. Like, yeah, I'm not saying you shouldn't. Let's do this one other one first. Um, enhance the underlying process, and I say embed intelligence for continuous improvement. Um, there's nothing more frustrating than a one-time fix that three months later people go back to the bad hats. Make it an intelligent thing. What, what's an intelligent thing? Uh, automation is an example of something intelligent. It could be back-end automation, it could be you know, a cool RPA front-end automation. It could be an alert that just tells someone who's working it, hey, you might want to do something a little different this time. There's an 85% likelihood this order is going to be delayed. I know you just got it, but based on all the characteristics of the order, based on the product category, based on the geo, based on the customer, there's an 85% likelihood this thing's going to be delayed. You, Mr. Order Management Person, Associate Clerk, you might want to expedite it. That's intelligence that you've begged. Now, why is that intelligent? Because the next time that order comes through, the same alert can go through. It's not just a one-time fix. Um, as I mentioned before, Monitor if this come come in, make the case. So this is uh, this is Solon. This is our radar software company. This is the product. Group. This is how we built our product around this these concepts. This is what we're trying to do. Uh, for those who know, she might be like, "Hey, I thought you guys did process mining." Yes, that is the underlying technology to our product, like the same way that queries are the underlying foundation to business intelligence. But people don't buy queries; they buy something that actually delivers value. So. Um, this is, I'm going to describe this briefly, then I'm going to go into a demonstration and then we'll talk some more about some other customers. So, what we do, we suck all the uh, transactions out of your system so you can see your process the actual way it happens. So, every last step that a purchase order goes through, every last step that an order goes through, every last step that a service route test ticket goes through, in your back end system, we suck that up, and it's something called event collection. And then we transform it into something called an event log. Um, the way I like to think of it as if you were driving with Google Maps and as you're driving, it's telling you where to go next and it's like your journey on your way there. It can tell you, you should go right or left. It's going to be faster if you go two minutes left because there's a traffic jam up ahead. An event log is that log of your travel. Contrast that to a dashboard in VI, that's your speedometer. I'm going 65 miles an hour. Great. Well, how am I going? Where am I going? That's, that's more of an event log. It should, it's a, or the other way to think about it, it easily. If I took a picture of my kid every single day and I put it together in this big, huge clipboard, that's what an event log is. How old he is right now, or she is, that's the KPI dashboard. 
then we have four pieces of functionality to do exactly what that transformation journey is I just talked about. It allows you to discover parts of your process, um, analyze them and prioritize them based on the business impact. It's something called an action engine, which actually has some artificial intelligence, machine learning built in, uh, where it actually allows you to reach out into the individual who's handling a particular ticket or order or purchase order and inform them of an action to take. And in many cases, even trigger a robot. That could be a back-end robot that does something automatically or a front-end um, RPA type robot. And lastly, a transformation center, which is the report dashboard that everyone here will be showing off to the managers after they finish the project to show that you've achieved it. Uh, we've done about 2,000 projects, over 600 customers, um, ABB, Siemens, Uber, Palo Alto Networks. So big digitally native companies like Uber and Palo Alto Networks, and companies that have been around for a very long time. Manufacturing and traditional industries, well, both. Um, and what we found is that there's a lot of things, there are a lot of similarities when someone goes to analyze certain parts of their business, whether optimize for capital or get my perfect PO rate from 65% to 92% at Vodafone. We bottle all that intelligence up, and they're often going off of similar systems, SAP, Oracle, Salesforce, all of them. And we put them in something called apps. So when you get started, Yes, I can plug in your SAP system and suck out all this information about perhaps your purchase orders. But I will build, or I won't do it, a machine, will build you an app. It's like a head start. It's like an accelerator. It's going to get you 80% of the way there. Everything that Vodafone's done, CNN's done, ABB's done, the best practices in their head, we built that. That's the little icons at the top look are supposed to represent apps. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate one for you right now, but instead of just taking a platform where we give you a tool, which would be a process mining, we're trying to get you to solve that problem. And those apps are built around a business problem. So yes, they are for the process, but they're built around a business problem, working capital, automation, productivity, perfect POs for SAP security pen, or for Oracle order management or for ServiceNow ticket management. But it's, how do I get first time right for that? So we build a bunch of analysis around it, so we'll give you a head start. Before I jump into the demo, any questions? All right. Um, right on time, 15 minutes. All right. So this is what I'm bringing up here, and let's take a time, I'm not gonna show connecting to SAP and pulling the data out and all the rest of that, it's really exciting and fun. If you're in Fair D, we can come talk about it later. Um, but what I'm going to show you is what, what you get once you put all that up there. This is an app built for um, the procure to pay process, or the source to pay, depending on how you say it. And it's for putting in automation. In this particular case, the goal was we're growing as a company. I won't name the name of the company, we're growing really fast. 30 to 40% year on year, and we want to handle the same number of purchase orders, but we don't want to hire more people. How are we going to do that? What's the optimal metric um, that we're trying to try and achieve for that for that particular one? Sit here. Uh, I make sure I got the right demo going. This I'm going back. Let's see. Process line. What's the core aspect of the process line? 
As I mentioned before, we suck in all that data, we create this event log, and what we show you is not a process that you drew on the whiteboard. We don't show you the process that people think happened. What you show you is exactly what really happened. This process here for creating a purchase requisition, PR, then create the PO, then send the purchase order, then receive the goods, and scan the invoice, and book the invoice, and say, yeah, so they're done, that's our process. You didn't sell anything smart, yet. Yeah. That only happens in 38% of the cases. What happens the other 62% of the time? Hmm, good question. So, what you can do is you can start expanding what we call variance. When I start to see the different paths that a purchase order might take, the different snapshots of life are different ways that POs move through the system. So as I expand this, I'm starting to see rules. More and more ways that a purchase order moves through the system. But when I change price, certain one would go through that. I can even see some that start at the scanning invoice. That's great. How did that happen? I think there might be some average buying going on. Something's funny. I could see some that actually go from the scan invoice back to create the PO. I can see the exact ones that did it. What's also interesting is I can see the effect on throughput time. So normally, from when I send the purchase order to when I see the goods, it's nine days. That's pretty good. When I change the price, it's not 17 days. I lost eight days because I'm seeing the price, change price after I sent the PO. It's not, it's, I haven't done anything from a configuration perspective. I just load up the data. This is exactly what's in the system. It's timestamps, it's events that are in the system. And again, I've covered 71% of my cases. I keep going on, I can see more of these. And oh, look, I, now I've received order confirmation. I've done order confirmation. These things all add time to the process. I can also look at how frequently they happen, the times, all the other things, up. and perhaps even where there's automation. Say, so how do you calculate your automation rate? Because in the systems that we pulled out, SAP or one of these things, there's a user ID. If the user ID is a person, that was done manually. They also have system IDs. Those are system ID or API IDs or anything like that. That's, that's, that's an automation step. We can even figure out the difference between the back end automation and the front end automation because the IDs are different as well. So now I've seen which ones are automated. Receive goods. I have 27%. Sorry, it's so small. I can barely read it, so those in the back end are definitely different. But 27% automation rate. Hmm. I receive a good, someone manually types in the QR code. I know there's scanners out there that you can do that on. In fact, I think I'm going to automate some of that. Maybe I should think about that step. Well, let's not jump on it right away. Take, take the thought for a minute. Now, if you can imagine, as I mentioned before, I said, I, I promise you that you have, there's more variations in your process than you can possibly like, fit into your mind. This is an example of what, this is a real company, and actually, and not the video company. We call this a spaghetti board. And you're laughing, but I promise you, your company is just like this. There's 655 variants. That's actually quite low. It's usually in the order of thousands. Our companies are somewhere, companies we work with are usually around a billion in revenue to very large, like ADE and Siemens, but usually, you know, a billion, you're talking about a thousand different variations of how a purchase order moves from a PR to being sent. Now, a lot of these are onesies, twosies, and you might say, I'm not going to do anything about them, and I'd agree with you and say, you know what's really funny? It's the onesies, twosies, the ones that bother people the most. And they have very little business impact. We spend a lot of time trying to fix those things and deliver almost no value. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. So, I'm trying to solve this process, this automation problem. And we think received goods could be a good place to go. I would agree. Um, so, but that's my first glance. So, oops, wrong one. Uh, the tabs across the bottom is what I mentioned we built apps. If you deployed Slowness out of the box without an app, you'd get a blank screen with that variant explorer I just showed you. There wouldn't be, oh, you can't see the tabs across the bottom, of course, because they're on the little draperies down below. Um, well, believe me, there's tabs across the bottom. Um, those tabs are, what's the app? This dashboard we built comes free out of that for you so that you can get an idea of how to start in terms of 
looking for, in this case, activity scouts, places where I could automate. So the number of menu activities versus the uh, manual rate. I see an outlier, which is good. That seems like a place that I might want to focus my energy on. There's also the ability to look at this by individual process steps in terms of the manual rate, the back end automation rate, and the, the quote unquote robot rate. So uh, I think receipt goods has also got a, a quite a low number of, uh, quite a high number. Of, I can s actually say I only want to look at processes that go through that step. And you can imagine anytime you're looking at lots of variations, you might also say, hey, that is great, but I really am interested in that change price. You could also look at just filter for processes that go through that. You start doing analysis based on just the processes that follow, which customers are doing their products or whatever. Um, I'm going to do the receive goods process with keep the selection and now I want to go find out um, am I just going to go automate every place that we receive goods? That would be a big project. That might take me four years. I might not have a job after that. Uh, let's get a quick win. So where should I focus my energy? Hmm. Maybe there's certain companies or operating units or departments where they're purchasing um, would have more value. So what we've done in this, this app is estimated the value you get from automating that particular area. How do we estimate the value you get? Find out the time it takes. I showed you earlier the amount of time it takes that normally would take from both step A to step B. You say, okay, that's the amount of time. There's a cost associated with that time. That's something you would put in yourself. We can give you some best practice ideas on how to calculate that time. It's pretty simple. It's an hourly rate plus some burden rate of your operating model. Uh, and then you essentially multiply this. So this is, this is basically a way of thinking about time. You say, well, time's not free. What am I going to do to fire people? I say, no, I'm not going to fire people. Remember at the beginning we talked about we want to process more PO to the same amount of resources. So I got to make time. That's what I got to do. So yes, that's what we're doing. We're making time. So let's just select just the ones here. I like that. And I also see that it only happens for the, these, the ones that go through that particular process. I can select those two if I want. I think for now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with that. But I also wonder, are there particular material groups that we're buying that actually have more value than others for me to prioritize? Because it's just those, those operating units, but maybe I only need to automate the ones coming from a particular vendor or for a particular material group. But actually, yeah, let's just select just those three. And you can see the thing on the left is getting really red. Um, and what I can see on these three is if, if I automated these, we're estimating, um, you get about $2.54 cost savings per PO. That's pretty good. Uh, and that's on over $1.8 billion of my orders. So remember at the beginning where I think we're $2.2 billion to a large so I'm still getting a lot of orders, but I've narrowed down my focus in terms of value. The, the number of POs is actually quite small. It's like 30% of the POs. So I just, by a couple clicks, I figured out which ones can deliver the most amount of value without having to automate everything. I just need to focus my energy in one particular area. So what would be the business impact of doing this? Um, so if I, I was doing just this, I could see what kind of business impact I could generate on that. Now this is like beforehand. This is like how you make your case. Hey, this is the reason why we should actually go and take this off. What's more exciting, and bear with me and stretch your imagination greatly, uh, imagine I went and put that automation bot in. I went and did it. I put in an automation bot. Maybe it was an RPA bot. Maybe it was a backend automation bot. Um, what I would get to is I'd say, all right, we're done the project. Let's go and take a look at the before and after picture. Um, so this is your money shot. This is your monitor in that, in that step four of that transformation journey. So my cost per PO prior to June was $11.26. Since then, it's $8.58. I saved the $2.60. My cycle time dropped. My automation rate went up. 
I would submit that without that cost per PO, these other three numbers are nice, but they're not necessarily going to get you budget for your next project. With that, not only do you get budget for your next project, you might get more. The problem might be like, go do this more, go do more of these. That's going to be your problem then. So this, um, I, this is what we're seeing where companies are successful with transformation initiatives, with process by initiatives, when they focus energy. I didn't change all of them. I only changed like 30% of them. And you know what? I bet you if everyone looked at that process explorer, it's gotten a little bit better, but it didn't get that much better. But it had a big impact from a cost perspective. And that, so hopefully that gives you guys an idea of some things. Let's jump back to presentation. Uh, so I, I just demonstrated um, a cure to pay. It's a nice one. Um, we work with customers across all these different process areas. Customer says, hey, you want to analyze our um, ordered cash process. Great. What do you want to do? I want to analyze my prices. No, 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 you know. I want you to reduce your daily sales outstanding, or you want to increase your on-time delivery. That's what you want to do. In fact, a customer that we engage with, a prospect we engage with, we usually do what's called a proof of value. We will suck the data out of their system, and we will prove that we can do one of those bullet points. Because I know right now I can do all of the, I can analyze the process. It's not that hard. In fact, there's probably open source software out there that can do it for you with a lot more heavy lifting and everything else, but you could. But let's, let's, let's actually deliver some value. Um, as I mentioned before, we've, we've been around for uh, almost seven years. You may not have heard of us because we have started in Germany. We're now both headquartered in New York and Germany. Um, we work with uh, all the names up there, uh, a lot of companies across a lot of different industries. I want to be careful to say that, yes, I mentioned Siemens and over the big companies we work with. We also work with small organizations. Uh, there's a company called Shukat. It's like a, I think there may be a $400 million distributor in Germany. Uh, they have processes where they can make a lot of money. They save millions of dollars, and that's a big number when you're talking about a $400 million business. Um, Gardner's recognized this, so we've, we've gotten uh, some good accolades and much of this growth that we've had has been on the heels of delivering successful projects and our customers and continuing to, to uh, do more processes within them. Um, so thank you, I have 20 seconds left. Uh, okay, I actually have a little bit of time left for questions. Um, if you haven't, come see us at our booth, we'll learn there, but I'm happy to answer questions now. So to clarify, I wouldn't have to have had all of my processes mapped already. You can suck it in, give me a quick win and I did it. So that's what I'm looking for, right? That's exactly right. In fact, I didn't show it. Um, Mr. Cordell, I'll show it to you afterwards. There's three, you can actually, you can, you can map the process if you want. You can suck in a map if you want or you can draw it, but most people start and say, you know what, I don't know what it is, and every time I go through that process, sorry, that process, that, the idea of mapping that and getting everybody in the room and mapping that, it takes me like three months, and all I get is a flow chart that everybody thinks is right. I'll tell you exactly what's happening. I'll do it in a couple weeks. Is there a limitation on, uh, like, data sources for you guys? No, so, uh, the most common ones are the obvious ones that you can think of, the ERP systems and the CRM systems or service requests. But Siemens, 70 ERPs, 30 of them are custom. Uh, it takes a little longer because, yes, we got to connect to it and learn it and understand it. So instead of four weeks, it might be six to eight weeks. Uh, but no, the, the only limitation from a data perspective um, is that you, you have to be willing to give it to us. So you can, most of our customers are deployed in the cloud, and that gets sucked up into our cloud. The reason for that is you get a lot of processing speed in the cloud, so you get snappy demos even on this really bad Wi-Fi. I mean, you try, try to download something with Wi-Fi, it's possible. Uh, we have customers that run on premise too. Same code base, same release cycle, but most of them are in the cloud. Any other questions? I know. It's Thursday, it's the end of the session, and I'm, like, I'm exhausted. I should have done all this, I should have done PowerPoint, though. Thanks for your time.